There are two rules that we're going to learn for differentiation in this video. The first one is the constant rule. The constant rule says that the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So if I am given some constant c, I'm just going to put it in parentheses or brackets, and I say what's the derivative of that constant, it is equal to zero. So something important for you to know here is that the derivative d dx means the derivative this whole thing right here, d dx of c equals zero. The derivative of a constant. So d dx of c means the derivative of a constant and this is obviously zero. So is equal to zero. And then we also have another rule, it's called the simple power rule. If I have a variable raised to some exponent n, and I want to take the derivative of that variable raised to the exponent of n, I'm going to write d dx, so this means the derivative Deriv <laughs> I don't even know what I wrote there. Derivative of x. This whole thing. The derivative of x raised to a power. And that is equal to, here's this really cool rule. You're going to take the exponent, n, and it becomes a coefficient times that same base x and then you reduce the exponent by 1. Important to note here that n is any real number. Any real number. n is any real number. So let's get started. And in these examples, I'm going to show you how to write the derivative. We write it different ways. So for instance, when we're in function notation, we're going to write the derivative with our prime notation. So this means the derivative, the derivative of f of x, and we pronounce it f prime of x. It's the first derivative of x, and it is equal to 0. And the reason f of x equals negative 2, the first derivative is equal to 0, because of the constant rule. So negative 2 is a constant, so we use our constant rule. Example on the right, y equals pi. Pi is also a constant. So how we're going to write the derivative, because it's not in function notation, we're going to write dy dx, and that is equal to 0, because the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. So that is also the constant rule. g of w equals the square root of 5. We're going to write that g prime of w, that's the first derivative, and the first derivative of a constant is equal to 0. And then s of t equals 320.5, that is also a constant. So s prime of t is equal to 0. So now before I go on to some more examples, let me just show you here. Let's go back quickly and just kind of show how we can write the derivative. So the derivative in function notation, we use prime. So that's our first derivative. f of x, first derivative of f of x is f prime of x. First derivative of g of w is g prime of w. And the first derivative of s of t is s prime of t. So this one's a little bit different right here. So the derivative of y is dy dx. 
and we say the derivative of y with respect to x. So that is the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so let's now try some more examples. f of x equals x cubed. This is going to be our simple power rule. So f prime of x is going to equal, we're going to take this 3 and it's going to come out front to be a constant or a scalar, a coefficient, 3 times, and then I keep the base and I reduce the base by 1. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. So 3 comes out front, and then my exponent is reduced by 1. In this next example, we're going to need to rewrite. So we're going to rewrite as y equals x to the negative 2. And now I can take that negative 2 out front. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative 2 comes out front times x, and then we reduce negative 2 by 1, and it becomes negative 3. And that's because negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And we rewrite that dy dx is equal to negative 2 over x cubed. We rewrite with the positive exponents. Now the first derivative of g of t equals t g prime of t is equal to, that has an exponent of 1, so 1 comes out front, and then times t to the 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so t to the 0 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so g prime of t is equal to 1. And then we have r equals x to the 4th. So think about how you might write this. How might you write the first derivative or the derivative of r with respect to x? It would be dr dx is equal to, and then you probably got this, 4x cubed. And if you got that, then you are understanding the simple power rule. Okay, let's find the slopes of the graph when x equals negative 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. Our first step is going to be to find the derivative. The derivative, remember, is the slope. It's the slope at any given point on the graph. And then our second step our second step will be to sub in the values. Sub in your x values. I'm going to put x values. This way I can write less x values into the derivative. To find numerical slopes. To find numerical slopes. So we're going to start with f prime of x, because this is given to us in function notation. So f prime of x is equal to 2x. 2 comes out front. We reduce the exponent by 1. f prime of x equals 2x. And now we're going to find f prime of negative 2, f prime of 1. I think it's supposed to be negative 1 right there, negative 1 f prime of 0, f prime of 1, and f prime of 2. So f prime of negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. f prime of negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. f prime of 0 is 0, f prime of 1 is 2, and f prime of 2 is 4. So there's the slope of the tangent line 
at each one of those points. So you might have this algebraically or, or mechanically, you might know what's going on, but let me show you what's really happening here. One, one, two, four. So we've got this going on. So we've got these points right here. We're gonna call that negative two, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, four. So what's happening is, is when x is negative two, my slope is negative four. When x is negative one, my slope is negative two. When x is zero, the slope of my tangent line is zero. When x is 1, the slope of my line is 2. And when x is positive 2, the slope of my tangent line is 4. So that's what we've just done here numerically, is we've found the slope of the tangent line. So how do you find the slope of the tangent line? The first derivative. So let's try the next one. First step would be to find the derivative. So the derivative is equal to 3x squared. And then we need to find f prime of negative 2, f prime of negative 1, f prime of 0, f prime of 1, and f prime of 2. Where are these numbers coming from? They're coming from these x values right up here. f prime of negative 2 is 12, f prime of negative one is three, f prime of zero is zero, f prime of one is equal to three, and f prime of two is equal to 12. These are the slopes at the given x values. So I'm gonna highlight so you can quickly look back at this if you need to because eventually it might end up being a lot. So the slopes are the values of your first derivative. They're the num numerical values of your first derivatives at specific x values. And these x values came from up here. So it, particular points on the graph that have an x value, all points on a graph have an x value, and all the points with the x value negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, this is the slope of their line. Now the constant rule, the constant multiple rule, so the constant multiple rule says that if you have a constant times f of x, and you want to find the derivative, d dx. That's the same thing as that constant times the derivative of just f of x, where c is a constant. So I'm going to show you how that works right here. We've got y equals 2x to the 1 half. So I want to find the derivative. I'm going to rewrite this with a little bit of color so that you can see. I've got my constant c is 2, and then I have f of x is going to be my x to the 1 half. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the derivative of y with respect to x. I'm going to keep this 2 out front, and then I'm going to find the derivative of just the variable base and exponent. So I multiply by 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then I simplify. So dy dx is equal to x to the negative one half, which is the same thing as one over x to the one half or one over the square root of x. And when you check your answer in the back of the book, you'll see 
how they want you to write your answers. So when you're getting your practice in, you'll see how they want you to write their, your answers. But that any one of those three forms would be a correct answer for that derivative. So let's try that again. So we've got f of t is equal to 4 fifths times t squared. So f prime of t is going to equal that 4 fifths times, I'm going to bring this 2 out front, so 2 times t to the first power, because 2 minus 1 is 1. And that's going to give me 8 fifths t. And that's our first derivative. Now, do I always put the 4 fifths out front? No. You're going to see me do this problem, and you will probably end up doing the same thing. You're going to see f prime of t, and you're going to say, oh, let's bring that 2 out front times 4 fifths times t. So you're probably going to start writing it with the exponent coming all the way to the very front. And that's absolutely fine. Multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter which order you multiply numbers in. So I'm going to show you with this one what I normally do. So I've got y equals 4x squared. So dy dx is going to equal 2 times 4x to the first power. So this 2, I just brought it out front, and then I subtracted 1 from it. So that would be dy dx is equal to 8x. Let's try the next one. And you can try some of these. Press pause and try them on your own and see if you've got it. If you've done that and you've come back, 1 half times 16x to the negative 1 half is equal to 8x to the negative 1 half or 8 over the square root of x. I'm not going to quite get it boxed. You could also have 8 over x to the 1 half power. Okay, let's try the next one. y equals negative 3x over 2. dy dx is equal to negative 3 halves. If you're going, whoa, 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 where'd that come from? This is a 1, so 1 times negative 3 halves is negative 3 halves. And then 1 minus 1 is 0, x to the 0 is 1, so it's just the coefficient. So you try this next one. y equals 3 pi x. And did you get 3 pi? Because that would be the correct answer. Okay, now let's kind of try and put it all together, and let's find the derivative of each function. Find the derivative of each function. I've got y equals 5 over 2x cubed. I'm going to rewrite, rewrite that as y equals 5x to the negative 3 over 2. So dy dx is equal to multiply by negative 3, so I've got negative 3 times 5 halves times x to the negative 4, so dy dx is equal to negative 15 over 2x to the fourth. So that x to the negative 4 is going to go to the de denominator with 2 and you get negative 15 over 2x to the fourth. Okay, let's try the next one. We're going to rewrite this one as well. y equals 5 times 2x to the negative 3.
and then that's going to be 5 times 2 to the negative 3, x to the negative 3. But I really just need x to the negative 3 to be in the numerator. So I've got 5x to the negative 3 over 8. And dy dx is going to equal negative 3 times 5 eighths times x to the negative 4. And that's going to simplify to be negative 15 over 8x to the 4th. So feel free to press pause. Try these next two examples for your own and then come on back and let's check your answers. So I rewrote y equals 7 thirds x squared and I got dy dx is equal to 14 thirds x which you can also write 14 x over 3. Just make sure that x is in the middle of the fraction and definitely not in the denominator. On the next one, if you haven't tried it, go ahead and press pause. I'm going to rewrite this next one, and I'm not going to go through all the work I did before, unless I have to. 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 2. So this time I do need to bring that 3 to the negative 2 to the numerator, and I'm going to have 63 in the numerator. 7 times 9 is 63, so I get 63x squared. And dy dx is equal to 63 times 2 is 126x. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool. Okay, what happens if we have y equals the square root of x? Well, we've already been working with the square root of x earlier with x to the 1 half, so it's not going to be a surprise that we're going to rewrite this. So let's rewrite as y equals x to the 1 half, and then dy dx, you're going to multiply the 1 half times the base of x and reduce that exponent by 1, so I get negative 1 half. So dy dx is equal to 1 over 2x to the 1 half or 1 over 2 times the square root of x. The next one says y equals 1 over 2 times the cubed root of x squared. So can you think about what we're going to do here? I'm going to rewrite as y equals, I'm going to need to bring, in, bring that square root up to the numerator, and then I'm also going to have to get rid of the cubed root. I don't know if I said square root. I think I said radical. You're going to have to, I don't think I said radical. You're going to have to bring that radical up to the numerator. So let's make sure that we know what this is. I'm going to save myself a little bit of room here. This is the same thing as 1 over 2x to the 2 thirds. So the 2 in the denominator is fine, but that x to the 2 thirds becomes x to the negative 2 thirds in the numerator or in the middle. So dy dx, you're going to multiply by negative 2 thirds, which is going to give you, I believe, negative 1 third. Negative 2 thirds times 1 half times x. And then when I subtract 1 from negative 2 thirds, I get negative 5 thirds. So the 2's cancel out, and I get negative 1 over 3 x to the 5 thirds. And I probably would just leave it like that, but they may have negative 1 over 3, and then they might have the cube root of x to the 5th.
I'm going to box that one because it looks nicer. Okay, y equals the square root of 2x. I'm going to rewrite. So our goal is to rewrite this without x without the radical. So I'm going to have 2x to the 1 half. So that's the same thing as the square root of 2 times x to the 1 half because the two is still the radical, but the x is what we want as a rational exponent. So dy dx, we're gonna multiply one half, so the square root of two over two, times x to the negative one half is the same thing as the square root of two over two times the square root of x. And then we have our sum and difference rules. So if we have more than one term, the derivative, if we have f of x plus g of x, so we have more than one term, that's the same thing as the derivative of each term added together. And the same is true with subtraction. So if I am subtracting two terms, I just look at each term independently and I find its derivative, and I subtract. So we're going to try that right here. So we've got find the slope of the graph at the point negative 1, 1. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find f prime of x. So I'm going to find f prime of x by finding the derivative of each term. So x cubed, the derivative is 3x squared. The derivative of negative 4x is negative 4. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So that's the same thing as 3x squared minus 4. Now I want to find at a specific point. So I'm going to put negative 1 in. Why am I choosing negative 1? It's actually not a choice. You're going to put the x value in to your derivative. So we get 3 times 1 is 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So the slope of the graph at negative 1, negative 1, 1 is negative 1. Okay, you try the next one. And when you're ready to check your answer, come on back. So g prime of x, I'm going to multiply the first term by 4. So 4 times negative 1 half is negative 2. And then reduce the exponent by 1. 3 in the exponent multiplied by 3 of the coefficient is 9. And then reduce the exponent by 1. And then the exponent is 1 times negative 2 and then reduce that exponent by one and you get x to the zero, which is just one. And we wanna find at the point, negative one, negative three halves. It's all about that x value. So I get negative one cubed times negative two is positive two, plus nine minus two is nine. So the slope is equal to nine at the point negative one, negative three halves. Now from 2000 to 2005, this is gonna be our last problem. From 2000 to 2005, and we're gonna need a calculator, the revenue R in millions of dollars per year for Microsoft Corporation can be modeled by this revenue equation. And that's just for those five years, so T is between 0 and 5, where 0 stands for 2000 and 5 stands for 2005. At what rate was Microsoft's revenue changing in 2001? So in 2001, that means x equals 1. At what rate was the revenue changing? So at what rate was revenue changing? That's your slope of the graph. So to find the slope of the graph, 
we need to find the first derivative. So dr dt is equal to 3 times negative 110.194 is negative 330.582t squared. That's where you're going to need a calculator. Multiply 3 times negative 110.194 and you get negative 330.582. Reduce your exponent by 1. Plus 2 times 993.98. Go ahead and put that into your calculator. Check my work. I got 1987.96t plus 1155.6. We're going to evaluate this when x or when t, not x, I guess that's a t, isn't it? t for time, when t equals 1. So let me grab my highlighter. When t equals 1, we're putting that in, and we're going to get negative 330.582 plus 1987.96 plus 1155.6. We're going to use our calculator, and when we put that in, we get 2812978. Now, I'm going to put commas here because this is in millions of dollars per year. So this is going to be 2812978 billion dollars per year. which is a lot. So if I would have put this into my calculator and kept my decimal there, I believe I would have gotten 2.81, not 2.81, I would have gotten 2812.978 million. So I just moved my decimal place over three because that gives me billion Three more zeros gives me a billion dollars. So I just put it in billion dollars per year. So that's a great application problem of how we're going to use our first derivative. So here, how is the revenue, it, Microsoft really doesn't matter. It's all about the revenue changing. That revenue changing told us what's the slope. What's the slope? And that, we know the slope is your first derivative.